previously on Sandy and Acidic Diaries. open venue number two of the tour um got there a little bit ahead of schedule didn't we yeah um, the time was smiling hadn't reminded malcolm that we were going to be there at that time so we just sort of stood awkwardly in the car park just being like so it's good again yeah oh my god <laughs> yeah uh walked into the clubhouse and you i mean it's just pretty remarkable isn't it when you um, the, the, the the feeling you get as you say it's very hard to articulate but the feeling you get when you walk in that clubhouse um, and actually going to the locker room, like, wow, like, you know, members' names on every locker. I've never seen a swimming pool in a locker room before, have you? <laughs> I mean, I yeah, mean, that, the, that stood out as I've well. I've seen some golf clubs with pools of water in their locker room, but that's usually as a result of faulty shower head or something yeah. like that. This was a legit swimming pool in the locker room. genuine rake. Sam is just showing some absolute skill with the lag putting here, having, having hit this green and many others, but not for very long. Yeah, I kind of went there just genuinely not knowing what to expect. Um, and I thought it was awesome, like a lovely course to play, um, visually a little intimidating off the tees. And it's probably the place, look at the kind of place that if you played there a lot, you'd, you'd know your way around it a lot better. I think playing it um, with Malcolm was definitely helpful first time round, but the green complexes were some of the most sort of heavily contoured yeah. and tricky mm -hmm. I've seen. I mean, I hit, um, you know, a, a really good drive for me up the fifth, sixth hole, I think, that short par four that brings you back to the clubhouse. Probably 20 yards short of the green and had no shot. Yeah, literally no yeah. shot, was there? And I remember going up the third hole with Malcolm and he's talking about the course design because when we were talking about it, he had to throttle back some of the contours on the greens. And I was like, Malcolm, I've never played a golf course where there's too much contouring yeah. on greens. Apart from the castle at St Andrews. <laughs> yeah, apart from the castle at St Andrews and that place. Yeah. And it was, um, they were nuts. nuts. Halfway house of the trip. Uh, yeah, yeah, nine, yeah. The ninth and tenth holes leading up to the halfway house are spectacular. Well. Yeah. 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 Nice little glass shed. Help yourself to beers, soft drinks. Honesty box. How good were the bloody pies? The pies. Mm. The, the pies, pies were good. And it was nice because the first time I hadn't eaten a sandwich for a meal as well at that so, stage of the trip. Yeah. Warm so. steak pie. Oh, yeah. it, it was, was just like, a joy. And it was story time with Malcolm, wasn't yeah. it? Like, yeah. Got halfway around, was about one down. <laughs> and uh, on the trailer. And 
I don't really eat much when I get nervous. I just want like cheese sandwich and that's it for me. I look over, Monty has a big lunch, and then he goes over to the Wentworth Clubhouse, this massive custard castle. <laughs> he goes over, gets the fork, takes out the pro shop, the observatory, the ladies' locker room, <laughs> brings it over. I thought, fucking hell, he's going to feed the whole table with it. He's going to take out 12 spoons. <laughs> anyway, that, that fuck just polishes the whole thing off. I look over at my wife and I say, honey, it's not a man alive if you that much custard and beat me. And I roll him five and four in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> sunset as well coming in that was um mm. that was probably the most stunning skyline i think of the trip that um, yeah, that I kind of burnt it up orange yeah. sunset that we had um it was just a magical evening and then um had a good night yeah, had, a, had a good night of uh barstool Tories. putting there is a man in Aberlady village called doug wilkie and doug wilkie has a shed and he likes making things from wood 10 years ago Doug had made these wooden games for playing if it was raining or indoors or whatever else and so on. There was a seesaw that I particularly thought was good. So on my 50th birthday, he appeared with that duck you saw last night. So this is the original putting duck, built by a guy called Doug Wilkie, out of a company which came putter. My 50th birthday, and Doug had uh, a bunch of guys from Ireland come across the village, play the village, and they do putting games, and I liked the seesaw. So he brought me this. So you'll see on the ridge comes up the back and there's a hole in the head mm. here. And on the base, underneath here, two little grooves and you get two little pins that sit. So the duck sits on the floor, mm. like so. And the pins hold them up. Then when mm. you putt up and get the ball in the head, he tilts up and goes on the ground. <laughs> and if you get that, you get, you get your name on the wall. Ten past nine, we've got Bruce on extension. Doesn't end there. We've got Sam on putting. Malcolm trying to finish his meal. James giving unsolicited advice. No. This is just ridiculous. No. Think, Stefan giving coaching advice. There's four independent things going on at the same time. How do they do it? Sunday morning, mm. first tee, Gullen one. I'm going to put it out there, I absolutely love Gullen. Mm. 
I you really that. liked it, didn't yeah. you? It's Fine. less obvious though. So like I came away feeling there's those you no know, gimmicks there. It just felt like pure honest links. But you really loved it. So well, just, just for me, I think I mean Gullen, you just can see everything. I mean from from points of Gullen, like you can probably see it's 360, 40, isn't it? 20, 30 360. miles or something like that. Mm. You know, it's just the views were incredible. Yeah. When you play Lynx, I feel, I don't play enough Lynx to, to, to want to play Lynx in mill pond conditions. I want to go there and get beaten up, <laughs> be shown how shit I am. Sadism. Well, because I don't, I don't if, I, if I played every week, you know, I'd probably want to calm conditions and stuff, but I want to go there and get beaten You're up. Right. Show it's nice how I to know what it's like off. with the wind. And the, the wind absolutely destroyed me, Gullen. Yeah, the views are stunning. <laughs> and it is just, it's just a classy place, isn't it? It's yeah. not like oh my god, the greens are absolutely outrageous or off the tee, it's just so stunning or the bunkering's mm. a masterclass. There's none of that. It's just very, very good, honest Lynx golf course. Just, just, just for a context, we played the whole 18 holes, filming, getting Droning. drone up, um, in three hours and 15, 15 minutes. 15, so yeah. three hours and 15 for, for 18 holes. We just mind. walked off the 13th tee box. Yeah, we kind of crossed over the 12th green, made a very poor score on 12, and I just I just want to get out in front of it and just kind of clear, clear my head. And I get accosted by this lady who says... You're gonna have to hurry up, you're going way too slow. <laughs> <laughs> with us which was a uh, great guy ross duncan who walked around with us and just gave us loads of information about the course member there oh, oh ross yeah. was a super advocate for gullen like we had a great morning with him didn't he? i mean mm. he would spend most of the time just taking pictures of my sort of steep outside the line swing and and, and, a, and a few nice shots on the way but we just had a blast with him he's a really cool guy to spend time with that's for me one of the of the tour that was one of the best parts actually was kind of people we met on the way and spending time with it would have just been a, a kind of smorgasbord of golf courses with us three turning up and actually the people that kind of came out on the rounds with us was was pretty pretty special i thought Had, had pulled a few strings and managed to get us a, to, to play a foursome on, on Muirfield, which <clears throat> Sam and I have, have never done. And so you told me, right, this is the situation. We're going to play Muirfield, but let's not mm. tell Sam. And we're following you coming out of Gullen. But we're going the wrong way. It left Ness at the bottom of town. And, and I'm getting, like, increasingly angry with you in the passage yeah, of he's not, he's not. He's not getting angry. Oh, I'm really angry. He was furious. I've got it. We're going to Muirfield. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> How do you when did you find out we're going here? Only from the minute You know when your phone said we can't get on your field? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Does Woods know? No. I haven't told anyone. <laughs> I was Probably actually losing angry. my temper then. I was like, why would you fucking turn around?
What was really nice as well at that point in the tour was actually no cameras, just put the cameras away, go out and enjoy. Yeah. 18 holes. 18 holes. Jim Cum holding this camera still enough. He is a social justice warrior. He's emptied all of his balls over the last few rounds. He's emptied his ball Running low on ammo. Just topped up in Kill Spin Pro Shop. Kill Spindy is obviously a course that I don't think any of us have played. No, but had high expectations of, didn't we, going in? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I heard it. There's a lot of stuff talked about it being a relatively short golf course. Um, which, but Malcolm which, had said that which, night, didn't he? It's when, a par 69, and yeah. it's it's about 5,600 or so. So if you price in 200 yards for par to get it to a par 72, would probably mean you're playing about a 6,200 yard course. So yeah, it's slightly on the shorter side, but, and there's a lot of, I would say, half par golf holes. If you ever do go play Killspindy, the first five or six holes are genuinely breathtaking. They just run along the coast, they're fantastic. I didn't like the first. They're gorgeous golf holes. <laughs> Shanky one. He did it, he hit a hustle, but no, the first one I saw. Killspindy. For those who don't know, lies across Abilady uh, and he's currently in the fetal position, rocking backwards and forwards, crying. So, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of talk out there about bringing courses to their knees. Bruce <laughs> brought Kill Spindy to its knees and then took the head off with an extremely sharp instrument and held it up, screaming in yeah. the middle of Abilady Town. It was a Ned Stark beheading. Are you it? not entertained? <laughs> It was. Um, I, just the, felt, I, just mate, felt, I just felt you wrong. You played great golf all tour. <laughs> you played really good golf. I think Kill Spindy was. Um, Kill Spindy was a massacre. <laughs> watching you walk from green to tea was like watching the Grim Reaper just sort of move behind, against those dark clouds, particularly that were coming in on the on the on the back nine. You were just sort of there licking your chops in search of your next victim. <laughs> I mean, you left a lot out there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if that, well, that rain came in and made it, I, I don't know about you guys, I found it hard to grip the club when that rain yeah, came in. The rain has well and truly come in. No. I mean, this is Scottish biblical. Bruce Patrick, still four under. I don't they know if it was rain it. or whether they it was the tears of Kill Spin Day because <laughs> and by then the spine and vertebrae was fully severed. <laughs> but I think they called it wet rain though, didn't they? Because in literally about wet. 10 minutes, we were fully soaked through. So it just it made score uh, a Is that what they said? Wet rain? Is that yeah, what it was? Because it was... They called it wet rain over It was over stupid. Because this is all of my, Malcolm Duck's stuff about microclimates, which is always going to come back and bite us in the arse eventually. Like you said, we set off on the 15th tee, I think. Before we'd even got green side, I was soaked and drenched, yeah.
Yeah. yeah. Come on, look. Who's on the phone, please? Come on, look. Is that you? You haven't knocked the car, look. I got. Look. I got out of the car. I was videoing it because it's fucking ridiculous. The boot was just left open like that. No, the car's locked. The boot's. How can a car be open? Look, there's nothing in there. Right. Have you hidden them? Is this a joke? No, I locked the car, yeah. I thought. The boots are. I'm tired. I can't. How have you got the boots open? I don't know. Thanks very much, From Killspin D, we um, we hopped across to the oldest remaining golf course. Muzzle bra. Oh, yeah. Muzzle yeah. So I've been calling it muzzle bra. Muzzle bra. All like you muzzle a dog. And we were, muzzle. yeah, because we were obviously very professional and we, we sort of write down sketches of the narration of these clubs before we go and get a bit of back, background information. And at one point I thought Sam was going to spell it M U Z Z B R. U O U G H. <laughs> yeah, my narration <laughs> ties it into uh, Jewish celebrations, whatever it is, Mazel Tov. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what a great way to end the trip, actually, when yeah, the sun came so out. Yeah, we do. Hooks up with Sam Cooper, who's obviously on his adventure, <laughs> his previous friend of the pod, and still friend of the pod, actually, amazingly. Um, who's out doing all the Lynx courses in Scotland. Um, hopped over. And he's a bit of a hickory hero, so he turns yeah. up with these. With his, with his own full set. Yeah, like, they were... They so look nice. They look fair. really good. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. I've got my niblick with zero degrees of bounce on it, so it's always a bit of fun. And then you have a few irons, so they're sort of between four and six degrees apart. So they're, I mean, they can't want to call it a five, it's not. So what's that there? What are you holding there? So that's a mid iron, so you use that all over the place, but it, it comes off with no spin. So it can go, it can go 200 yards. It can go 150 yards. It's uh, they're just so flexible on how they how they play. It's not like you just bush on this and then pick a club and pick a number and go for it. You've got to be, you've got to adjust for it. And that's a cleek. Yeah, it's sort of a driving iron. So you'd use it more for, and more forgiving than today's technology. Or? <laughs> no, not quite. They don't have the. What does Trotty call it? The uh, the speed, speed the slot. speed slot on the, there's no Stop speed that. slot on there, is there? Um, and then a couple of woods. So that's quite, quite a nice one. This is so here you are. So this is an old Octoloney one, D and W Octoloney from St Andrews. Octoloney's still there, of course, but I don't think they're making any wooden clubs anymore. This is nice, this is... Fairway wood? Yeah, it's actually, what if you look at it, if you look at it, it's it's not at all dissimilar to a modern hybrid, like a rescue club, and that's kind of what it was like. It's... If you, if you zoom in there, they all have their own maker's stamps on them, so this is a Forgan. Forgan of St Andrews, who was one of the mm -hmm. famous club makers now of the day. Yeah, it's a lovely ration, isn't it? But if you look, you can almost see there the edge of the crown stamp. So he was able to put those on because he made clubs for the king. It actually whet my appetite for hickories as well. Yeah, you know. I yeah. quite like just the hickory. I mean, you know how much of a nut I am with swing thoughts and the golf swing and technical stuff. I love just, you know, getting a soft ball on a very small tee peg with a hickory mm. driver and just being like, right, just try and make a smooth swing. Bring it smooth, shallow. If you come in too steep, you can bust the shaft. What about 
Over there. Right, that's why I that's why I picked you emails. Get your partner. knees in the floor to keep this shallow. I'm gonna just drop it just so I can get a get a good pass at it. <laughs> Basically, I want it outside your front foot. I'm gonna have to just sweep the ball. Oh, Bruce! Yeah, it's commercial. That wasn't great. Oh my word. That wasn't oh. great. Oh, Catch him! <laughs> oh, there we go. Hammered. 12. That's JW. Sit down. Pretty, pretty middle? Yeah, it's too good. <sighs> Bounce on that. That'd be alright, wouldn't it? Gonna be coming from the right touch. It's all about soft hands. This is all a fail shot, isn't it? Bunker. Got the touch of an elephant there. So we decided we were going to play with, with hickories, right? Um, because it's the oldest standing golf course in the world. <laughs> uh, it's where Leith, the first Leith hole Links was is cut. The where the first hole was cut. Yeah. So the oldest well, not the first play. hole was cut, I don't think. I think the first hole was might have been cut. Was it Leith? Was it Leith? But the first first hole that was cut of the four and a quarter inch size diameter wow. hole that obviously the RNA standardised in 1893, that was um, that started at Musselburgh. So a lot of things there. You know, Mrs. Foreman's at the back of the fourth green. That's the first halfway house in golf. Mm. A lot of people believe. Um, if you know, opens. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It was part of the initial founding group of Prestwick and, and, and St Andrews that founded, you know, the Open and helped fund the Claret, Claret Jug, obviously, mm. through the Honourable Company. Piped. So balanced. Carry. Of course it is. Lovely strike. Shame it's 40 yards rise. Spaghetti al dente, come on. I love it, I absolutely love that. Can't spell spin. Was that Al Hazel? I think if we were being honest, Musselburgh wasn't our favourite course of the trip. Oh, I think you've got to look at it. So I would challenge back a bit there and say, you've got to go, you, you're playing, if you're going there and playing it, as a visitor, you're playing it for a specific reason. If you're going there and expecting, you know, Trump International or Royal Dornock, then you are going to be disappointed in terms of the layout of the course because that's not what it is. It is essentially the oldest golf course in the world. That's really, there's a lot of arguments around whether it is or isn't, you know, it's essentially what you're playing. And it sits inside a very busy racetrack. That's a, that's a, that's a fully operating race mm. course. Nine holes. If you play it with modern equipment, a lot of the layout is pretty obsolete because it's not particularly long. Yeah. You can probably carry all the bunkers. The you can the par threes were all mutant long. They yeah. Were like 240. But so playing it with hickories, it didn't actually become <laughs> yeah. an exercise score. I, I, I'm glad we did it. Yeah. I, I think once is probably enough, is what I would say. Yeah, I'm not fair. saying every time I'm going to go up to Scotland, I'm going to seek out Musselburgh to do the same thing again, but it actually whet my appetite for hickories as well. Yeah. There goes the head. Oh, <laughs> head's gone. How does that? Head's gone. How does that happen? Uh, it happens. I've not. I've not made a divot there. The head's made a divot. Oh, I've, I've got an action shot. Is the shot. head gone? Yeah. <laughs> Sixty yards left, and the head's gone about thirty yards right. And I just feel quite hard done by, to be honest. Can we see the? Can we see the damage? Well, yeah. Looks like Harry Potter's one. Part one of the equation. <laughs> Wingardium Leviosa. <laughs> well done, Kirk. So Versatile. Versatile mid iron. Use it all over the place. You can use it chipping around the green, off the Not tee, there. out the rough. What's that, the mid iron? Oh, yeah. It's been a few holes since we last checked in with you. How is the domination so of Williams going? The super secret domination doesn't know about it yet. But, um, what, you I'm up six five up through six. Five? So we've got three holes to go. We're going to triple max. Half the first in five. Half the first in five. Now I parred the second and he bogeyed it. And then I 
Um, he, he didn't complete the next four holes. He didn't complete the next hole. So I've, I've gradually picked up a few with kind of with doubles and, and <laughs> I've had a few doubles and great shots. Holes and I mean, to be fair, I think I'm being fairly generous by giving him triple max. So it could be like, it could be hundreds up. I mean, wouldn't we? There's a woman behind us, poor old woman behind us. We, we would not finish this, this nine hole golf course we started the four hours before dark. We wouldn't finish it if you had to, if you had to finish this holes out. My goodness go. Mate, gracious. That's right, that's still left then. I mean, it's still left, <laughs> but it was a. It, it's in play left. To be fair, that's actually an alright golf shot. It's taken me seven holes to figure it out. And we had a great fun on this tour and thank you again for everyone that's helped us for echo for providing the shoes and for scotland home of golf who are now scotland where golf began for providing us uh, with the accommodation shout out to jamie darling for uh, doing it jamie Such a fantastic darling, job yeah. in, in um, setting us up at uh, these courses and, and of course malcolm duck too um the duck for yeah providing such a great base and enjoyable experience in uh, in east lothian have a lady Well done. Well done, chaps. Very enjoyable.